want to know a little bit more about Beno. Who's Beno? Okay, so I was born in Turkey. I grew up in Turkey and I did all my undergraduate degrees uh, in Turkey. And then I moved to US. I did a scholarship from Duke University for master's and PhD. And uh, at the time, it wasn't easy. I mean, I'm not that old, <laughs> but at the time there wasn't email, there was no internet. So I... this is like snail mail application in Turkey. You can't even find information, you know, like what is yes. TOEFL? There's a test TOEFL. You need to take TOEFL. Like you yeah. never heard of it. There's a test GRE, like, so um, I managed to get a really good scholarship. And then I did my uh, master's and PhD degrees and a postdoc at Duke University. And then I decided to move to Canada. And now I'm at Carleton University. Mm, awesome. So there was no internet, uh, no email. How was the communication? You just write thing and send it by, by mail? By mail. Okay. I mean, it is real like it. It is sheer determination. Yeah. It is like it's it is. not easy because it's not easy even to find information. Like, okay. like who are the universities in the U.S.? You don't know. So, you know, like there was a Turkish American Culture Center. Yeah. And then there is one book there which is called the Peterson's Guide. Mm. So they have kind of like the list of Ops. universities, departments and the address. And then you write them and then they say, you know, like what are the required documents and things like that. You put it together. So it, it was not easy, but it is, it is sheer determination. And I do not come from a rich family, okay? And then like, I remember the first time I flew to US, it was the first time I was on a plane. Yeah. And then I do all these connections but and, but it's good, it's good, it pays off. It pays oh, okay. off, a little bit of courage, a little bit of determination, hard work. It's kind of the recipe for success. So it looks like you didn't identify your supervisor from the beginning, just to make an application to study yes. grandson in that university. Yes. And then you go and whoever. Yes, whoever takes me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's That's no like... time for that kind of communication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK. Do you have a good memory? Of <laughs> like the graduate school or? No, before, before that, <laughs> your childhood. Oh, my childhood. Your child. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, I, I had a really great childhood and um, my parents, they're well educated. My dad is an engineer uh, and he did a master's degree at the time and then my mom oh. Uh, she was a teacher, math and science. Okay. So I have some good genes, hard work. <laughs> but yes. and, and Turkey is a really wonderful country to grow up. Very social community is important, and I really see the benefit of that now. That um, it's very easy to interact with people for me, socially, you know. Okay. And I look at my kids. If you grow up. Um, in US or Canada, it's a bit different. Yes. You know, so there's definitely very good life skills that comes with that yeah. environment. Yeah, especially with that technology nowadays and internet and social media, I think even everything is different yes. than our, our days back. So when you were a child, would you ever thought that you're going to be an environmental engineer or environmental uh, specialist? How, how that come? Was there any thing that said, oh, I want to be in working with the environment? Okay, so the way at the time worked in Turkey, and it is still very similar. Um, so there is a nationwide selection examination. Okay. Okay, at the time it's like one million people take the Apply. exam. Okay, and then there are like limited <coughs> spots in universities. Okay. So you kind of rank your choices. So my undergraduate is environmental engineering, okay. which is quite rare at the time because it was a really brand new, new. field. I mean, even if you look at uh, professors now who are working in the environment, 
total area. The, typically, the background is either civil or chemical engineering with some yeah. environmental courses. So nobody really knew what environmental <laughs> engineering was. Like my parents are like, well, what is that? What do they even do? <laughs> is it like butterflies, flowers? <laughs> like what do they do? And then I did read some description, and it appealed to me because. Um, I mean, even now, I think it's one of the most fun engineering fields. Would you not agree with that? I yes. mean, I can handle all kinds of courses and we took all kinds of courses. Yeah. Yeah. But like I look at what my colleagues do in mechanical engineering, for example, I mean, that is really boring to me. Okay. Okay. So some things I think work out, but also engineering overall is such a great discipline. Whatever you specialize in, you can always find things that appeal to you. Okay. You know, like for example, some people are great in report writing, some people are great in the field, some people like doing research. So I think if you have a good undergraduate degree in a good field, uh, you yeah. can basically gear it towards what you like. Uh, and, and I think that is very important. But for me, it is environmental engineering is very applied. Yeah. Like if you read the newspaper today, I'm sure there's like at least 10, 15 articles about drinking water, wastewater, yeah. climate change, so which is all very relevant. And some engineering fields is mostly like writing code. And I find environmental engineering is very applied and it's relevant. Yeah, it's very relevant, and uh, and I really love it. Okay, that's. I, I really it's... love it. I don't know if I picked something else, and then I would have loved it as much possible. But um, I am I, happy with I, what I, I have. <laughs> okay, that's good. That at least you are enjoying. Yes, what yes. you are doing, and this is something um, uh, important. And I would imagine now. The discussion between you and your parents when you said, oh, I'm going to go to environmental engineering. I think it was like a, a, a hard discussion for them or it was like a, a smooth one. I mean, they uh, they gave me all the freedom. OK, there was really no pressure so in selecting this or that. Yeah. But in Turkey at the time, too, like if you want to get a job after graduation, like you need to yeah. be either an engineer or a medical doctor. Those are the top two. The, those are the top two, like even MBA and I mean, those things were really new. Like if you go into even like lawyers and like they were not great fields in Turkey, like things not are changing. But so my sister, my older sister, she's a doctor. So she was okay. in medical school and I saw how she studied. Like it's a different type of studying. It's a lot of memorization. In engineering, you're smart. You understand one problem. You can solve hundred similar problems. So I looked at my sister, ah, I, that's not what I want to do. I probably should go into engineering. Okay. And, and environmental engineering really appealed me at the time. Okay, so that's, it's, it's quite interesting when you, when you got those study on the old days when there was no internet, there was no resources as we have now, we will now live in, I would say, in the, in the luxury life. When, having access to all of the resources now compared to our era in my time as well. There was no internet, there was no computer. So we just want to read about something. You go to the library and you sit in the library, you get a book and you start to, uh, to work on it and, and read about it. But after you finished your undergraduate study, did you work or you got a scholarship right away? I did go to school right away. Initially, I started a master's degree at a Turkish university and I was miserable. <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> Why is that? Like I am a productive person. Okay. I need to yes. work hard. I need to keep myself busy. Yeah. And that position, university, and you know, like it, maybe at the time, the, the facilities were limited. Like, I mean, for yeah. research, you know, there's limited equipment. So, yeah, it was like type of a job. You take courses, but the courses were not challenging for me. So that's mm. easy. And it's basically like you're sitting there all day. 
but you also have to be there at work like those so they check you know oh. like you need to be there at 8 30 until 5 p.m but like what do you oh. do like everybody's drinking tea <laughs> <laughs> or, or turkish coffee <laughs> or turkish coffee <laughs> and i was like oh no this i cannot do this but then that kind of also opened my eyes that okay like i would like to do this maybe i need to be in a country where i can do better research yeah. and so that's kind of that experience was really useful okay. i mean you need to be kind of miserable a little bit to assess okay like i need to get out of this what will make me happy and then once you figure that out once that clicks you can follow that path and, 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 then, do the, yes, sure. and then take the necessary steps but that's also a skill in life i mean if you're giving advice to young water professionals at some point throughout your career it doesn't matter if you're a student even when we are full professors yep. uh, that there will be a time that you feel stuck okay. you're not happy like this position is not serving me anymore this job is not good for me anymore uh, one of the important skills i observe in successful people are the ones that can recognize that i get out of that situation um, as it's... opposed to versus being stuck in that position for whatever reason, either you don't want to take risks or, I mean, you know, that there may be several reasons. Uh, and uh, so that's, that's a very important thing that if things are not well, working well for you, you recognize that and then you correct the situation. And it don't be fair to, to, to change the yes. situation around you. So what are you teaching when, once you, you are doing uh, graduate uh, study uh, back home? Were you teaching at that time or just research? Because for us in Egypt, for example, when you get hired in the university, you have some teaching TOT as a GA or a TA plus your research. Okay, so we did have teaching assistant positions, but yep. my position in that university was a very short term. Okay. Uh, so, and because I was also a fresh student, I was mostly taking courses at the time. Mm. So, okay. it, there wasn't, but I know what you're saying. Okay, yeah, I know yeah, what you're so. saying. And in fact, <clears throat> like maybe in the Middle East, graduate students do much more. <laughs> yes, that's that. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Almost like a personal assistant, <laughs> isn't it? In addition to everything else. I would agree with that. But uh, that's at the same time, it shaped their future, yes. shaped their character and those things. So you, you started your undergraduate as an environmental engineering and then, okay, you take courses and you get embossed to the education system, the university, which is different from the elementary and the high school. And you have instructors. Do you remember one of those instructors that who inspired you or really have an impact? Okay, he's doing something great and you still remember her or him during your undergraduate study. Okay, so what I remember and what is really impressive, I think, at the time I wasn't aware of that. So my university, my department, environmental engineering, but this is also the same for other departments like civil engineering, which is kind of like more male or dominated, I would say. In my department, and this is like early 90, 1990s when I did my undergrad. Okay. So half of the department professors were female. Oh. To me, and I still have that, like to me it is normal, like it's a very Western or American or Canadian North American thing and that's the first time I saw it, like when I went to Duke University first time I was looking at the department pictures and they were all white and male. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> like, what is that? That, that was the first, I, I was really shocked, you know. Huh? But in Turkey, <clears throat> half of the department, all my, half of my professors were female professors and the department chair was also a female professor. Oh. And I think that's so important because to me, it is completely normal. There's nothing extraordinary about being a female in, a, yep. in an engineering field or a professor, and I think, uh, like looking back now, I yeah. see, oh, that was such a unique thing, yeah. which I wasn't aware of yes. it, 
but then you see later oh my god like that's really precious yeah and i still have the benefit from that like if you i do a lot of um mentoring i uh, for like women in science and engineering i work with female students we do a lot of outreach with high school students go talk to them events try to you know attract um underrepresented groups not just females but overall yeah, underrepresented groups to engineering uh, and talking to other female students like they many of them they do not have the self confidence when they get into mm -hmm. these fields they were they experience some anxiety or like do i belong here i'm not really sure if i'm cut out for this i never had any of that oh okay i ne never like never <clears throat> And, and I think that's because I grew up in a supportive environment and it's normal. Family. It's normal. I'm not the exception. Okay. Like I belong here, you know, and I think that mentality really helps you throughout your life yeah. and your career. Mm -hmm.